Hey everyone, and welcome to our first Baldur's Gate 3 build guide. In this new series of builds, we will be looking at how mods can make pre-existing classes more fun and add new playstyles and custom options. And as always, we'll have all links to mods added below in the description. So without further ado, here is the Hexblade Warlock. The Hexblade is a new subclass for the Warlock which adds more melee combat focus to the Warlock class. They focus on their unnatural powers from their patron to channel magic into their weapon, making them fantastic frontline warriors with an arcane twist. Starting off with the perks, the Hexblade, unlike the other two packs, will gain proficiency in medium armour, martial weapons and shields. This is huge for those wanting to play a melee Warlock from the off but not wanting to play a Giff Yankee. Now all races can enjoy using the weapon that they desire. This being said, I highly recommend only using weapons that work with the Hexblade's new power, the Hex Warrior. This power allows you to channel that arcane power into your weapon and use your charisma modifier instead of strength or dexterity. This is very similar to how Shillelagh works. Weapons that are not included are any two-handed weapons like greatswords and warhammers. For this build, I decided to stick with long swords to give me an option between sword and board or not, but also because I wanted to use the dark blade from the basket full of outfits mod, as I feel it really adds to the look of this build. The next power the hack Hexblade gains is the Hexblade's Curse, a once per short rest ability. This is a powerful spell that curses your target and allows you to gain advantage on attacks. And similar to Hex, it also deals extra damage upon a successful attack and this attack damage is equal to the Hexblade's proficiency bonus. And lastly, if the target dies, then you'll be healed equal to the level plus your Charisma modifier. This is why you want Charisma to be as high as you possibly can. Cantrips here are pretty self-explanatory. You always want to go with good old Faithful, Eldritch Blast, but the second one is personal preference. Here, I go for Blade Ward, as we will be in melee range for most of our fighting, and the extra resistance helps a lot. However, honourable mentions here will be Chilling Touch and Friends. Friends is to use to get that extra advantage on those rolls when you are using Persuasion. For spell choices, the Hexblade gains a few new subclass specific spells, and it's very much worth it to try them out. In my opinion, these spells are amazing. The first spell that we go for here is called Rothal Smite, a melee attack that does 1d6 psychic damage on top of your already existing normal attack. And it also inflicts Frightened. This spell is incredible, and I highly recommend when playing this build, as you have a high chance to hit due to your charisma modifiers. The next one was something I was testing out at first, and on paper is really good. It's a shield that lasts for one turn and increases your AC by 5, and makes missile weapons ineffective. It's a spell that doesn't appear to cost a action or a bonus action, However, I did end up changing this spell later on, just due to not having as many spell slots as I would like to justify its use. Moving on to the best race here, and honestly, it doesn't matter. Play whatever race you want, as long as it's from the custom lineage mod, to get your free proficiency, a free feat at level 1, and your choice of modifiers. For proficiency, I chose Stealth, as we'll be using this upon hitting level 3 when we get Darkness. For feat, I went with everyone's friend, because it adds a plus one to your charisma score. You don't have to choose this one specifically, but I advise adding a feat that gives you a plus one to your charisma, so you can hit that 18 charisma at level one. And then, our modifiers both go into charisma as well. This makes our weapon more powerful, and also allows our Eldritch Blast to achieve higher levels of damage when melee is not an option. Stats wise, I opt to go for 17 charisma, because of everyone's friend. This feat adds that extra additional 1 to your charisma, so you actually start with 18. This is obviously your main feat for all damage, attack rolls and spell casting, so it's good to have it as high as you can when you start. You can even get it to level 20 when you hit level 4. And this is obviously if you take the attribute increase stat. The rest of the stats will be 12 strength, mainly for jumping and carrying heavy equipment. I go for 14 into dexterity and constitution, here as a nice even spread for defense and health. These attribute spreads are not by any means optimal, just what I thought was best for my playthrough, and you guys should have fun with what you want to do, 
and how you want your character to be. During my playthrough, I did use the Nautiloid level 2 exploit. I do not suggest doing this unless, of course, you're on your 5th or 6th playthrough of the game. Doing this does make your character extremely overpowered up until the Druid's Grove, but also allows you to hit level 4 way sooner than you should, way before you get to the Goblin's Camp. To do this, simply hoard any and all of the Nautiloid canisters you come across, and then use Lysel to sneak in and drop all canisters in the doorway area when the imps are killed. Ideally, you want to have your character go in on his own, kill all of the imps, and have Lysel not in the combat queue. Then you want to move Lysel over to the overlook, and then jump upon the little overhang. Then all you have to do is wait for the Cambians to come, and let Lysel fling that firebolt scroll you found earlier into the Nautiloid canisters and nuke them into Bethesda's Fallout games. When you reach level 2, which you now will have if you chose to go the Nautiloid route, you will have to choose from a list of invocations. My recommendation is choosing Devil's Sight for when we get to level 3, and choose Darkness as one of our spells, and the other I would choose is Agonizing Blast, because of our really high charisma modifier. As for spells, there aren't really many great choices here, but I would choose from either Expeditious Retreat for that extra speed, Armor of Agathis, or Arms of Hadar. I chose Arms of Hadar here, however, I do not remember using it once, so probably would have gone the Expeditious Retreat if I had known that ahead of time. When you hit level 3, you gain access to a choice of boon, either the Pact of the Chain, where you can gain a familiar at your service, or a Pact of the Blade to summon a weapon with your Charisma modifier. Or, alternatively, the last one is Pact of the Tome, allowing you to choose selected cantrips from your Book of Shadows. In my opinion, I think Pact of the Blade is not a great choice here, because the Hexblade already benefits from weapons that use the Hex Warrior. Plus, getting a powerful weapon, like the Dark Blade, allows you to get a much greater effect and still gain the passive or active benefits. For me, I chose Pact to the Chain. This gains access to an imp who also has Devil Sight, like yourself, and will also benefit from fighting in the darkness, like you. The spell I chose here is Branding Smite. This is very similar to Wrathful Smite, just instead it deals radiant damage and prevents invisibility. More melee spells the better, and it really adds to the whole spell sword sort of vibe that this class has going for it. As per the replacement spell, I opted to swap out shield for darkness, as I wasn't actually using it and didn't feel it was that viable. This may change later, however, as I said before. Now upon reaching the highest level for early access, being level 4, we gain access to our second feat. And as I said at the start, you can use the attribute boost to get 20 charisma, giving you a plus 5 to your modifier. You can also gain access to another cantrip ability, so choose whatever you feel best suits your needs. I went with Chilling Touch. Our next step is to go for the next spell. For this, I chose Misty Step. This adds a huge amount of maneuverability for the Hexblade, allowing us to dart around the battlefield at great pace and drop darkness from anywhere. Replace any spells that you don't need, and also feel free to test out any of the other spells and let me know how they work down in the comments below. For example, I would like to see if Blur works better than Darkness, but for the moment, Darkness is the solid option to go for. Finally, there are many feats here to choose from, and all of them add interesting options to test out. However, in my head, I did have the idea of a Blackguard style character, so I chose to go for the heavily armoured feat here. This allows me to gain access to heavy armor proficiency, and it does add an extra plus one to my strength. Equipment for the Hexblade will be pretty simple here. Using Basket of Outfits mod, the Darkblade Longsword is our choice of weapon throughout the whole game. It does additional cold damage, but also adds a unique Freezing Magic Missile spell that acts as the same as Magic Missile, just with an additional 1d6 cold damage. I will say now that this spell is extremely overpowered, so use it at your own discretion. For the rest of the equipment, find the best possible of medium armour that you can get until you hit level 4 if you do go down the heavily armoured route like me. Scale Mail plus 1, which you can find from the Druze Grove, is a great choice to go for. So those are the hard recommendations for equipment. As for everything else, 
you can decide on what you choose to wear. But feel free to let me know what you think goes well with the Hexblade and let me know down in the comments. So that was our Baldur's Gate 3 Hexblade Warlock modded build. If you've enjoyed, please leave a like and let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. It is free and if you don't like it in the, in the future, you can always unsubscribe. I hope to see you guys next time in the next crazy build video. Let me know what you guys would like to see and I hope to see you next time. Bye.